1991 saw the outbreak of war in the Gulf, and newspaper tycoon Robert Maxwell drowned after falling from his luxury yacht. Dennis himself was barely keeping his head above water. So we're forward in 1991 now, which is not a good year for you, because everything is falling apart. Um, the stuff with Rula's going really badly, you're having this affair with Fiona, you leave Rula, you start really drinking like mad, and the drink driving, come on, tell me about that year, it wasn't a good year. Don't tell me you can't remember any of it. You know, I mean, it looks like I'm a big rebel rouser and I got done for drunk driving. Na magistrate's court next door, actually. Um, but I actually, you know, I was never in the Oliver Reed sort of category at all. I mean, I didn't have any fights. There were no, oh, the occasional photographer. But um, I was actually getting so much earache at home for various reasons. So in the end, I was staying out I was, and drinking far too much, but I just didn't want to go home. So by the time I did go home, I wasn't, in a, I wasn't a very pleasant person. In 1991, you took a real loss on a, a film, which you had, um, in an extremely gung-ho way, remortgaged your house to finance. It was called Cold Justice. And <laughs> you said, <laughs> ironic, right, really, ironically, you couldn't even stand the film at all. When it was finished, it was absolute tripe, you said. Well, it wasn't too clever. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Um, yeah, I was very, very stupid then. Um, Why were you so stupid? You've been working all those Well, because you get, you're told by money men around you. and Yeah, I don't know. It was just real stupidity. But we were in the middle of filming it. We were in Chicago. Um, we just needed this extra amount of money. And, and I was told that it was guaranteed never to really be used. But we needed it then. So stupidly, I um, mortgaged some of my house, yeah. Lots of it, in fact. The cold justice fiasco ended up costing Dennis £200,000, but luckily not his house. Eighteen months after their separation, he and Rula decided to give it another go. We had this big reconciliation. I was in Australia doing Geoffrey Bernard is Unwell. And I'd been in Perth and I'd been to Brisbane and then we were going to Sydney. And I phoned her from Sydney and said, look, this is stupid. Why don't you come over and see if we can work it out? So, so she said, yeah. But it was all worked out, so got what time of flight was and all that stuff, and uh, she arrived about midday after a 24-hour flight, which so it's not good news anyway. And I sort of said, now, there, um, there are two ways we can look at this day. I said, either you can go to bed, or we go to bed, whatever, um, sort of now, and get over your jet lag, or just rock on through the day and then sleep for as long as you can from this evening onwards. And she was like, Chris, I said, well... I don't understand why, and this was in the car, I'm driving her back from the airport. She said, I don't understand why I've got to make these sort of decisions. I said, well, basically, you see, England are playing Australia at the um, Sydney Cricket Ground, and we've been invited to a box, so we can either go sort of all day, or we go this evening. She went, I've just arrived, this is reconciliation time, and you want me to go to a cricket, because poles aren't very fond of cricket. <laughs> and uh, it was a bit brave, I have to say, and probably very stupid, but... We went, it was great, and we beat them. We oh, beat the Australians. Dennis, shame on what? you for that. No, it's How nice long is the flight to Australia? Uh, 24 hours. Name one woman, Polish or otherwise, who'd want to get off a flight from Australia and go and watch cricket. See, self, self, self. <laughs> In 1997, the world was rocked by the death of Diana, Princess of Wales, and supporters of British nanny Louise Woodward were campaigning for her release. Dennis was hitting rock bottom. Which brings us on to 1997, a right stinker of a year. Yeah, that's, I guess, I think that's when Ruler left, yeah. And, um, and I was in a very bad state then. I didn't, uh, I was useless. Um, you didn't even look like yourself, did you? Apparently not, no. I mean, you know, I was living on my own, which I'm not very good at. Um, I've got some very good friends who were with me a lot, but um, no, apparently I looked terrible. I thought I was marvellously handsome. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, my skin was all horrible. Everything was, I was peeling. Um, uh, no, I was just, uh, just in a t horrible state and very, very, very unhappy. And work wasn't going brilliantly well at that stage? No, you see, because it was, this whole... Th it actually... The whole ruler thing was... Uh, one night I came back and I gave her a, a clump and um, I hit her and I gave her a black eye, which I was desperately ashamed of. And the whole deal, her deal was, if we go to do this in a divorce court, all this will have to come out. So I kind of went, oh, and I was so ashamed of it, I just didn't want anybody to know about it. And um, so I said, just take all my money, which she did quite happily. And 
but then she went to the papers and so it all came out anyway so I, I would rather have gone to court in fact now um, but it did have uh, an effect you know they're going this bloke is a drunk wife beater and we can we afford to employ him and so I went through a very t bad time professionally and I had no money um, little. And actually, um, your professional track record was completely impeccable. You hadn't ever been a drunk rabble rouser on set or anything like that and got into trouble. No, no, no. no. Um, so it was a very, very duff year, yeah. Mm. And yet, that year, you still managed to meet the current love of your life, didn't you? Family, yeah. Um, she was uh, part of the stage management at Windsor Theatre, where, where I was doing panto, and we did. Uh, I'd done many pantos, and I'd really got fed up with them. But this one was really good. I had a fantastic cast, and we had. A, and also, I was a bachelor. So, I mean, I'd done a lot of pantos with Ruler. So it was like between the matinee and the evening show, I was dragged around the shops, you know, um, which is fine. Um, but this was really terrific. It was just 20 minutes away from my house, and we had a wonderful cast, and we had a really good time. And crew, all the crew, and Pam was part of the crew. And, uh, you know, it wasn't a, an instant thing. I mean, well, I suppose it was over four weeks or something. But um, we, you know, got to know each other a bit, and then, um, then decided we should should try and be together and and have been sort of every day since in fact she's lovely and in rather a small way without kind of mansions and houses in the south of France and we started in a quite small quite sort of yeah I mean I had to downgrade flat. very swiftly yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah but I've managed it I did it as uh, you know I'm, I'm back it's really <laughs> no question about that is yeah. that you're back I mean um, you're going to be at Drury Lane for a year well we start at the National I'm doing do little in My Fair Lady. Uh, we start at the National and then we go into Drury Lane, yeah. So it's quite posh and pucker, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and some amazing names associated with the production, I mean. Well, Sir Trevor Nunn's directing it. Jonathan Price is playing Do Little. Um, Martine McCutcheon is playing my daughter. I'm miles too young for it, you understand, but I thought I'll just age up a bit. If you look back on your life and you think, my God, if I'd had any idea how it was all going to turn out, what do you wish that you had known when you were 18? Um, I, I don't know, really. Um, I, I haven't got any huge regrets apart from, you know, I had a few years when I wasn't that good a father, but apart from that, or I don't appear to be that good a father, um, apart from that I haven't got, really got any regrets. I, got, I went skint because of ruler and now I'm back. I'm okay. I've got a really nice house, a lovely woman, two beautiful children. So what do you fancy for the next 52 years, then? <laughs> I don't think I've got 52 left. I bet you've got at least 52 um, left, a minimum. Well, I'd like to get my handicap down. I mean, that's a great <laughs> thing about doing a year at the Drury Lane. I can play golf in the daytime. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, hopefully, I, I think I'm talking to Yorkshire about a television series. Another, you know, wonderful dream would be to take um, My Fair Lady to Broadway. I've never played Broadway, so that, um, I'd like to do that and win the lottery. Yeah, that'd be nice. <coughs> Here and in America. Fantastic. <laughs> you, 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 so your ambitions are quite small, Fry, then? Absolutely. Nothing big. Dennis Waterman, it's been brilliant talking to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.